Now for pediatric physical exam. Assessing a child is very different than assessing adults, so be sure to write down these four key points. Number one, we always interact with the parents first and the child second. This helps to build trust with the child and the family. Number two, encourage the parent to be involved with the child. Huge NCLEX tip. Be sure to write that down. For example, let the child sit on the parent's lap during the physical assessment. And number three, communicate with age-appropriate simple language, understood by both the parent as well as the child. And number four, we always keep medical equipment out of sight. This will help to decrease unneeded stress and anxiety, which augments the vital signs. And number five, invasive procedures are always saved for very last. For example, ear exams as well as blood pressure cuffs. So as a general rule on the NCLEX, we always do the least invasive first, like observing respiratory rate without touching the child. And we always save the most invasive stuff for very, very last, like ear exams, vital signs, and even introducing new medical equipment, but always very last, as these will typically frighten the child and augment the vital signs. So ATI had a question here. Physical examination of a toddler, appropriate nursing interventions. Keep the medical equipment out of the toddler's sight until it's needed. Yes, always saving it for very last. Now a top missed NCLEX question about assessment techniques. So here we go. While preparing to perform a physical assessment on a 22-month-old child, the nurse should complete the following actions in which order. Now, this is an order response question that over 70% of students got wrong. So don't let the NCLEX trick you here. Just think least invasive first and build that trust and rapport. Then progress into the most invasive procedures like vital signs. Since, let's be honest, the blood pressure machine, pulse ox, and thermometer can be downright scary for the child. So looking at our unordered options here, we're going to drag and drop into an order response. So the number one thing that we should do here is number four, interact with the parent first. Number two is use a toy to play with the child, build that rapport. And number one here, or basically number three, is take the child's weight and height. And then number four, which is our option number five here, listen to the heart and lung sounds. And then very lastly, obtain the vital signs, yes. As you can see, we're building rapport first and slowly progressing into the most invasive procedures. Now, switching gears for infants 0 to 12 months, specifically for physical exam. For the growth, we look at height. Now, the height should be at least 1 inch per month. They should have 50% increase at 12 months. And for the weight, huge NCLEX tip, be sure to write this down. It doubles at six months. Again, this is the most tested time and time again. Now, it also triples at 12 months. So, for example, if a newborn baby weighs around six pounds, well, then at six months, it should be doubled at 12 pounds. And at 12 months, it's going to be 18 pounds. Now, anything under these benchmarks must be reported to the HCP. So, another top Miss NCLEX question. Which assessment finding should the nurse report to the healthcare provider? A six-month-old with a birth weight of eight pounds and five ounces, who now weighs 14 pounds and four ounces. Remember, at six months, the birth weight should double. So eight pounds and five ounces should be around 16 pounds and not 14 pounds, four ounces. So this baby is showing delayed growth and development. So we definitely need to report this to the HCP provider. Now, Kaplan mentions eight-month-old client, possible delay in growth and development. My child has almost doubled the birth weight. No, doubling the birth weight, remember, should be at six months, not eight months. So we definitely see a delay in growth here. Now, for nutrition, breast milk or iron-fortified formula is recommended. Never cow's milk. So remember, no cow's milk for infants. And solids should begin at four to six months, typically when the infant can maintain control of their head and neck. And be sure to write this one down here. 
only one new food per week. Huge NCLEX tip. This is done to assess any unknown allergies and to take it easy on the immature GI tract. Now in terms of infant assessment, starting at the head and then moving down. So for the head, at birth, the head circumference is slightly bigger than the chest, but equals in size around 12 to 18 months. Now it's important to know that newborns also have two non-ossified membranes on the head called fontanelles, or basically soft spots, between the bones of the cranium here. Now fontanelles should be flat and only slightly pulsate when the baby cries, coughs, or lies flat. These fontanelles should never be bulging at rest or sunken. This is priority. All right, that wraps it up. Thank you so much for watching. Don't forget to take your quiz and download the study guides. And also feel free to share the love, share with a classmate and even your instructor. See you guys in the next videos.